Hi, today is part two in a series in which I'll be going through how you go about taking care of a praying mantis. Today we'll get into some information about feeding. Just like you and I, mantids grow in some way or another as they age, and so the type and size of the food has to correspond with the size of your mantis. Same reason why you don't feed your newborn baby a steak. It just simply can't eat that yet. It's not developed enough to eat something like that. And the same concept applies here. So let me go through some of the most common feeder insects that you see in the hobby. And I'll also kind of give you a rundown of the pros and cons of each one. By the way, if you're a reptile owner, a lot of the same feeder insects that I'll talk about today will kind of cross over into the reptile hobby a little bit. So chances are, if you keep a leopard gecko or something like that, some of the feeder insects that you feed it uh, might work just as well for a praying mantis. So that's just something to keep in mind for those of you who have reptiles. I'm gonna go in order from smallest to largest in terms of the size of the insects. So the next little feeder animal I wanna talk about is known as the springtail. And the reason why I didn't say insect is because they're not even considered insects. They're considered calembola or something like that. So these are actually very interesting little animals. They've been around for about 400 million years and on the bottom of the abdomen, there's this little mechanical uh, like spring and it's held in by a lever called a tenaculum and basically when they're scared they can sort of release the lever and they can launch themselves a whopping three inches or so. <laughs> Doesn't sound very impressive but it is because they're very tiny and so they can kind of jump several hundred times their length. So that's pretty impressive if you ask me. They usually come in a small container with distilled water in there and some charcoal and you usually feed them rice grains or yeast and basically it grows some mold and then the springtails eat the mold and then, or maybe the yeast itself, I'm not really sure. They breed in there and then you can feed it to very small praying mantises. Now the thing about uh, springtails is that they're normally fed to very small praying mantises and so they're a little bit more rare and so the vast majority of mantids you'd feed fruit flies which happens to be our next feeder insect. Okay fruit flies they're really common actually a lot of people use them to feed their frogs as well as praying mantises of course and there's probably about two or three main species uh, that you see in the hobby. The first one is the Drosophila melanogaster which is pretty small it doesn't have any wings so you won't have to worry about them flying around and infesting your fruit uh, <laughs> and then the one kind of, the, the one that's kind of step, a step up from there uh, is a slightly larger one called the Drosophila hydei, and uh, they're also flightless. I can't remember if I already said that because I've filmed this clip way too many times for me to remember. So I would recommend all of these. The only con I could think of right now is probably the fact that your mantis might quickly outgrow it just because they're relatively small. And so maybe by the fourth or fifth molt, your mantis probably won't even uh, want to eat these very much. And so that's why we're going up in size each time. The reason I said two or three species is because there's a third one that I know of. There's pro maybe there's more, but there's another one known as the um, Turkish glider. And I'm pretty sure it's the exact same species as the Drosophila melanogaster, the first one I mentioned. Uh, however, there's some variation in the genetics that causes them to have wings, or that means that they have wings. Uh, so they can kind of glide around a little bit. So that's why they're called Turkish gliders. Presumably you'd feed a very young mantis the first one and then you'd kind of upgrade to the second one. However, I usually just stick to the first one and just feed it to them until they're like an L3 or 4. And then I'll upgrade to the house fly or the blue bottle fly, which happens to be our next little uh, feeder insect here. Okay, on to our next one. So you heard me mention in the last clip uh, about the blue bottle flies. And what I basically meant was the flies in general that are a little bit larger. So that includes the house flies. The blue bottle flies, the green bottle flies, there's even, I think there's even like a stable fly. There's all kinds of different ones. Um, and these are one of my favorites. Like this is something you'd feed to a slightly larger, maybe like you could probably start feeding a mantis uh, these flies at around L4 to pretty much for the rest of their lives. They love the flies because their favorite insects are the flying insects. That's what the praying mantises love most. So these are one of my favorites. I'd highly recommend them. They usually come in a, uh, well, in a, in a container, but in their pupal stage. So they they come with the pupas. And what you do is you basically store that in the fridge so they don't all hatch out at once. When you want to feed them, you take a couple of those out or a few of them and you just drop them in there. That's what I do. And then over time, they start to hatch out. And as they uh, hatch, they get spawn killed. <laughs> they get obliterated by the mantises and they love them. So it's kind of sad for the fly, but personally, I don't really care. <laughs> Next, we have crickets. So crickets is an important one. I want people to hear this if you're owning a mantis. I would not recommend crickets at all uh, just because I've had some bad experiences with them. Uh, they have been known, I've never experienced this particular thing, the first thing I'm gonna mention. They tend to bite the legs of the mantises apparently. They, they like to kind of nip at things or whatever. So kind of a nasty personality there, the crickets. The next 
maybe even more important thing about the crickets is that they can actually transmit diseases sometimes. My first mantis that I had, his name was Charlie. I fed him a lot of crickets and I didn't know any better. And what happened was he uh, developed a kind of a disease where the skin, or I guess underneath the exoskeleton, it gets kind of a black like spot, bit, uh, like a disease. I don't, know, I don't know what it actually is. I think they call it the black death. It's not actually the bubonic plague, obviously, but uh, it looks like it because they look terrible and they eventually kind of die early. That's what happened to Charlie, sadly. Um, so I would say avoid crickets. The next one is the roach or roaches in general, the dubias, the red runners, all those ones, the ones you'd feed reptiles. Those are perfectly fine. I love, I love roaches. I'd recommend them. <laughs> that sounds like I like them to eat. But no, I don't. Next are the mealworms and superworms are pretty similar. Basically, these are a type of beetle larva, specifically the darkling beetle. And the thing about beetle larvae is that they're generally pretty strong. They're actually like physically muscular almost. They have this certain amount of strength to them. And this is the sort of thing that a smaller mantis probably won't be able to handle. Uh, they actually have this kind of like a reflex. When they try to get away from something, they have this kind of circular squirming motion. Uh, and this can be very difficult to control, like I said, with a smaller mantis. So I would only recommend these for a mantis that is nearing its adult stage. Next is the waxworm, and I'm also going to include the hornworms into this category because they're both a type of caterpillar, moth caterpillars, actually. Um, and basically, I would say that the waxworms are, are not as strong because their skin is, like, softer. They're more squishy, I guess you could say. And so this is the sort of thing you could feed to a younger mantis just just fine. The hornworms though, they're a little bit stronger, so I would say follow the same idea that I brought up uh, when I was talking about the mealworms. Okay, so that's pretty much all I can think of right now when it comes to feeder insects. Uh, the three of my, the three that I like the best, my three favorites, I guess you could say the top three, would be the fruit flies, the blue bottle flies, and the roaches. And the reasons are because the fruit flies are a great starter food, they're great to start off the life of a mantis because they're tiny. Uh, the blue bottle flies are also one of my favorites just because they're a, a great intermediate food as well as adult food. Uh, basically just because they're flying insects and the mantids love them. And the roaches because you can get a great variety in the sizes since the nymph to adult stages are a lot different in size. So you can feed a baby roach to a baby mantis and an adult roach to an adult mantis. And uh, it's a good amount of nutrients for them. So those are my three favorite ones that I would recommend. Now that we've gone through that, how much should you feed your mantis? Well, that depends on whether or not your mantis is a male or a female, and it also depends on how young it is. So if your mantis is a newborn baby or whatever, and it maybe is in its first 10 or 15 days of life, you wanna make sure there's a constant supply of food in there because they can go hungry very quickly. The kind of rule of thumb that you can rely on is you want their abdomen to look a little bit like a fat banana. So if it looks kind of like that, it's good. It means it's well fed. As your mantis grows a little bit though, they can go a little bit longer without food, and so you can go a little bit longer without feeding them. Uh, but they, but you still wanna make sure that that abdomen is a little bit chubby. As soon as a mantis becomes an adult though, it becomes very different. So the females, they get extremely voracious and they wanna eat and eat and eat because what they're doing is they're preparing to lay their eggs, so they wanna get as much nutrients in the abdomen as possible. It's very different for the males because what the males do in the wild is they'll fly to find the females, and in order to do that, they have to stay light and uh, because of that, they want to eat very little. And so if you end up with a male as an adult, just don't worry too much if it doesn't want to eat much because it's just how they biologically are. With the female though, you want to make sure it's eating a lot so that it can fill up that abdomen. That way it can have enough nutrients to lay eggs. So that's just about all I can think of right now when it comes to feeding a mantis. If you have any questions, make sure you post them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for being here. If you like my content, Click the subscribe button, and if you like the video itself, make sure to click the like button. It helps the video out and makes it kind of get promoted and uh, recommended more. Goodbye! <laughs>